Good morning. Good morning. God bless everybody listening. Uh, I love you. It's Wednesday morning. Um, I have a really important message. Uh, this is going to be um, exposing the false prosperity gospel. The most important message, guys, to us is the real gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to know what the real gospel of Jesus Christ is, guys. Not a false prosperity gospel that's duping thousands, if not millions. I'm going to get right into this because I have a ton of scriptures, guys. A ton of scriptures. And I've prayed about this. I know people are going to hear this, get saved, get get delivered out of these, these lying buildings, these get away from these greedy dogs behind pulpits, these covetous people that are practicing covetous, making their own selves rich, stealing people's money, uh, duping people to try to pin people by uh, giving people what they want to hear. What do they want to hear? They want to hear, oh, they want to get healed. So they sell them a pipe dream that, oh, if you sow this amount of money, you'll get healed. Or if you sow this amount of money, you'll come out of poverty. Yes, God can heal and yes, God can prosper. But that's if that's God's will for you, okay? Everybody's not rich. Everybody's not healed, okay? So their prosperity gospel is a lie from the pit of hell, okay? They've been duping people because they're, they, 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 they are, 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 are pulling on people's hearts, guys. They're pulling on people's hearts because they know that people are so desperate to get healed, so desperate to get out of poverty, so desperate. So then they, so they, they do people and they, and, they, and they patch it up and then twisting around scriptures and, and wrapping it up in a nice bow. And then all of a sudden, the ones that are having the jets and the ones that are having the mansions and the ones that are driving the Bentleys are almost all them, okay? The same people are not healed. The same people are still poor, okay? God can prosper you and God can heal you. God does it whenever God wants to do it, if he wants to do it, okay? So I'll prove it to you, okay? Just because we receive Jesus Christ in our, in our hearts as our Lord and Savior doesn't mean that, you know, if I had um, tendonitis in, in my left arm and the tendonitis goes away. And if it doesn't go away, there's something wrong with me. I'm not believing enough. I, I don't believe God's word. I don't believe it enough. It's on me. So that's what they do. They say, you know, if you don't, if you don't, this is yours. If you don't have it, you know, something's wrong. No, it's nothing's wrong at all, guys. Nothing's wrong. I'm going to prove it right now in Scripture. First, I want to lay down the foundation, guys, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? The simplicity that's in Christ. Okay? The gospel is right here in the Word of God. There is not another gospel. There is not another gospel. There's one gospel. One. Not another. Okay? Here's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me give you a few scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the scripture. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. What's the gospel, guys? Which you were also saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, for I delivered unto you first of all, first of all that which I have also received, how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. He died for our sins and was buried and rose again. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The gospel of Jesus Christ, guys, right there. Romans 5, 8 through 10. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. 
What are we saved from, guys? The lake of fire. Romans 6.23. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We're saved from death. We're saved from sin. We're saved from hell. We're saved. What he did for us. We're not saved to have mansions. We're not saved to be rich. We're not saved to have Bentleys. We're not saved to have five private jets. We're not saved to have divine health. We live in a body that's dying daily. Okay? Our spirit, our soul, we're saved. When we put on the incorruptible, then we will have perfect health, guys. That day has not yet come yet. We all know John 3.16. Let's go there. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Might be saved. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Saved from our sins. Saved from death. Saved from the pit of hell. Titus chapter, Titus 2, 11, 14. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation appeareth unto all men, teaching us, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present world, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity which is sin, and purify unto, unto himself a peculiar people, zealous for good works. Where is it where we're driving Bentleys and, and having jets and... Oh, we're healed from tendonitis, and there's no more, no more tendonitis, no more, no more sickness at all. I'm not going to get a cold ever again. I'm not going to have a fever ever again. I got divine health, because by his stripes I was healed. By his stripes I've been made whole and saved. Saved from sins. Saved from hell. Saved from death. Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. Set me free from this power of sin. I'm no longer a slave unto sin. He set me free. He made me whole. But I still live in this body. So sickness could come upon me. I might get a, I might get a cold tomorrow. I don't know. I hope not. Oh no. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You might speak that into existence. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. That's about tearing, tearing people down or building people up. Let God's will be done. God will give me the grace to endure whatever he lets me go through. He's a good father. This is perishing, this flesh. I ain't worried about this. What is this affliction that we go through compared to the glory that will be revealed? Our best life now? I don't think so. Our best life is the one to come with Jesus Christ. That's our best life, guys. God will give us the grace to endure, the grace to be persecuted, the grace to suffer if need be. Anything that he allows to happen to us is okay. He is in charge. He is in control. He does as he wills. He's God Almighty. We're not. As I went over in the last video, exposing the little God doctrine of demons. But let's get back to the scriptures, guys. Oh, that's what the scriptures tell it all. They expose these lying demons, these doctrines of demons. So I laid down the, the foundational foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And nowhere in there is there a prosperity and health gospel. People lie, manipulate, and covet, and deceive, and pull on people's hearts because they're so desperate for a healing, so desperate for some money. They're chasing after men. 
listening to lying men. Manipulate the scriptures, as the devil always does. Paul warns about people preaching another gospel, and I'm going to end with that scripture, one of them. He also warns about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. He warns about people preaching another Jesus, another gospel. He warns about it. He warns about it. Why? He knew this day was coming. The Holy Spirit of God knew this day was coming. One gospel of Jesus Christ, guys. Jesus Christ came down from heaven to die on a cross for our sins, for the whole world's sins, that whomsoever believeth in him shall not perish and have everlasting life. He came to die for our sins, to pay the penalty for our sins, to save us from our sins, to shed his perfect blood for us. He died for us and he rose again the third day for our justification. That is the ones that place their faith in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Place their faith in him and he will save. He is mighty to save. But you might get a cold or a fever tomorrow if that happens. Okay? Don't let these people lie to you. We live in an imperfect body. Side note. If there's such thing as the prosperity gospel, which is health and wealth, that's what it is. It's the health and wealth false gospel. Why does Jesse Duplantis wear glasses? I'm confused. I'm, I'm confused. Help, somebody help me out. If, 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 that's the divine, if that's the word of God, that's the prosperity gospel, health and wealth, divine from God. So that's only God's will for you. Why does he wear glasses? Come on, guys. This ain't hard to figure out. Not hard to figure out. But guess what we're going to do? We're going to go back to the scripture. I'm going to prove it to you. Let's expose this, this uh, false prosperity, health, and wealth gospel. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 25 through 27. Thank God for his word. His word is a lamp onto our feet and a light onto our path. So we can see. So, Philippians chapter 2, verse 25 through 27. Yet I supposed it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that he had heard that he had been sick. What? I'm sorry, but did I just say that? I must have read that wrong. Hold on a second. Did I just say that? Hmm. That he heard that you knew that he was sick. What was he? He was sick. Sick. What happened to... Oh, God must not have seen, uh, uh, I can't pronounce his name, Epaphroditus. God must have missed that one. He must have not seen that his servant, his minister of the gospel was sick right there. As Paul writes, he says it. Let me say it again to you. Yet I suppose it necessary to send Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants, for he longed after you was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick for indeed, he was sick nigh unto death. He was sick near unto death. But God had mercy on him, and not him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. So we have a preacher here, a servant here, that was walking with Paul, and he was sick. And he almost was sick unto death, but God spared him. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. It says this. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine affirmities. And what? And what? And infirmities? 
infirmities. Let me, let me define that word for you, okay? It is the Greek word, asthenesia. A-S-T-H-E-N-C-I-A, asthenesia. And what does infirmities mean? Illness, sickness, disease. Paul's writing to Timothy, drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine, and thine often infirmities and thine often sickness, illness, diseases. Timothy had stomach issues. He had, he had some illnesses. God must have forgot about Timothy too, I guess. I, I guess according to like Kenneth Copeland or Jesse Duplantis or the millions of others or tons of others, I should say. So, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20. Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Militum sick. What's going on here, guys? I'm so confused. Because all over the New Testament here, I just see that we got Timothy, Epaphroditus, <laughs> can't say his name. And now we got Trophimus have I left at Militum, sick. He, Paul had to leave him because he was sick. Some contradictions here, guys. Does this make sense, guys? What these other people are preaching, these false prosperity gospels? Why do you think people are still walking around having illnesses, getting sick in these earthly vessels at times? Why do you think they're not getting healed all the time? Look, guys, God can heal. I personally know a man that had stage four cancer that miraculously disappeared. That was the grace of God, my friends. He was healed. And it wasn't by Benny Hinn. And it wasn't by Todd White. And it wasn't by Kenneth Copeland. And it wasn't by these liars and deceivers. It was by the grace of Almighty God. Some people get healed and some people don't. There's no such thing as a prosperity, health, and wealth gospel. Because if that was the case, these three men wouldn't have been sick. Paul wouldn't have to have left Triumphimus and Militum sick. He wouldn't tell Timothy, drink a little wine for your stomach problem, for your infirmities which the word is A-S-T-H-E-N-C-I-A, asthenesia, and that word means illness, sickness, or disease. So he's telling Timothy, drink a little wine for your stomach's sake because of the illness, sickness, or disease. Can you pray for the sick? Yes. Can the sick recover? Yes. Is it happening now on this earth like it was in the book of Acts? No, it hasn't been. And you're deceived if you think that way. Doesn't mean that God can't. Doesn't mean that God's still not healing people. He is. I know he is. I met a guy. I know him. But God does what God wants to do when God wants to do it. He's awesome. If someone, you know, if, if, if someone gets sick and, and they don't get healed, God loves them just as much as he loves the person that gets healed. <coughs> That's God's perfect will. Yes, that's God's perfect will. And he gives people grace to go through it. Grace to endure. Grace to give them strength. And some of those people he's drawing even closer to because they're depending upon him. God is good. He saved us, guys. We're going to live forever for all of eternity. Those that he saved. Us, the believers. So if we suffer for a little while here, it's okay. It's not that we want to. No one wants to. But if that be the will, we know that God is good. We don't question him. We still live in these earthly bodies, guys. You see the bodies get old. You see people getting old, getting gray here, losing their vision. Losing their hearing. I 
I just gave you three scriptures, Philippians 25 through 27, 1 Timothy 5, 23, 2 Timothy 4, 20. Shows three examples of people sick. What happened to them? What happened to Jesse Duplantis and wearing glasses? Why does my wife have glasses on right now? Is she a sinner? Does she live in sin? She must not, you must not have enough faith, honey bunny. No, no it's not the case. Great woman of God, loves the Lord with all of her heart, mind, soul, and strength. And so do a lot of you believers out there. You do too. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not, you're not, not believing good enough to get this money. Not, not believing enough to get healed. <coughs> but you, you are saved. You are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You will be with the Lord. Our God and Savior, our Father in heaven for all of eternity. There's not going to be any sickness. There's not going to be, be, be any diseases or shame or sorrow or pain. It's going to be perfect the way that God made it. But that day has not yet come. Not yet. But it will. So we can endure. What is our breath? Our life is just a breath. We're here one second. We're going the next. What's, what's 70, 80, 90, 100 years of your life compared to all of eternity? Your best life is not now. Joel Osteen, you're a liar. Repent. Repent. Your best life, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, is the one to come. Is your eternal life with the Lord. Yes, we can have joy here. Yes, we can have peace here. Yes, we can overcome evil with good. Yes, we can walk in love. But yes, we can suffer. Yes, we can get persecuted. Guys, the New Testament is filled with suffering and persecution. But God gives grace and peace and joy and love and strength to endure, to overcome. And he gives us his Holy Spirit of God that leads us and guides us the whole time, the whole way, in all truth. He does, we're not alone. Why did he send us the Comforter, the Holy Spirit of God, the Comforter? He comforts us. He loves us. We are okay in him. I feel bad for all these people that have given all this money to these false ministers Promising them health. Promising them wealth. And then it doesn't happen. And these poor people, some of them probably get disgruntled with God. Some of them probably turn away from God because they're following a false gospel. Jesus Christ says, lay down your life. Those that try to save their life will lose their life. And those that will lose their life will find their life. Lay it down to Jesus Christ. Don't worry about the money. He says, don't worry about what you put on, your clothes, what you eat, what you wear, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Trust in the Lord. Live for Jesus. He is life and life abundantly. He is life. He's eternal life. He lives inside of us. Abundance of life is him. It's eternal life with him. It's being right with God. Being saved. Blessed abundantly forevermore. Us believers are going to live with Jesus Christ forever, for all eternity, loving and worshiping Him. Being with our Daddy in heaven who loves us. It's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. God loves us. Oh, what is it? There's a scripture about, I have not seen nor ear have heard of the things basically that God has for them that love him. Guys, he loves us. We're blessed. We are blessed. Nothing wrong with you. Nothing wrong with people that you know that didn't get their healing or didn't get the money and they're still struggling. Just trust in Jesus Christ, guys. Live for Jesus, not for wealth. 
not for healing. Live for Jesus. He died for you. He died for us to save us so we could be with him forever. <laughs> forever and ever and ever and ever. For all of eternity. Ask God for grace to endure. He doesn't leave us alone, guys. Now let's talk about this money problem. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. But we are fools for Christ's sake. But we are, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour. Paul's writing. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. They didn't have a mansion. They didn't have surf and turf, lobster and steak. They didn't have everything, guys. They were hungry. They were thirsty. They were naked. They didn't have a place to lay their head. Philippians 4, 12 through 13. What else does Brother Paul say? <coughs> Love Brother Paul. For, uh, Philippians 4, 12 through 13. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul knew how to be content. He didn't chase after the things of this world. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He was naked. He didn't have a place to lay his head. He wasn't living for prosperity. He was living for Jesus Christ. Hebrews 13, 5 says this, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content in such things that you have. Because he never leaves us or forsakes us, guys. You see the theme here? Don't covet. Don't live for prosperity. Don't get duped by these preachers. Be content. If you suffer, you suffer for the name of Jesus. If you're persecuted, you're persecuted for the name of Jesus. If you don't have a car right now, you don't have a car... Jesus loves you. He'll give you the grace to walk to where you gotta go. You don't need a jet to preach the gospel and go fly everywhere. We have what you call now internet. You heard of it? YouTube. You can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ for free. Oh no, for free. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Don't be greedy for filthy lucre, guys. Don't be greedy for filthy lucre. Let's see what Jesus has to say about these things. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 through 24. Matthew 19, verse 16 through 24. Behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, 
Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if there will, en but if there will enter into life, keep the commandments. He say not to him. Which Jesus said, Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith I, unto him, All these things I have kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. This guy had a problem, guys. He had great riches, great possessions, and they ruled his life. Jesus said, lay it down. Is it okay to have some prosperity if that's you and, and you're a believer? Sure, but it could be a trap to many people. It can take away people's faith. The deceitfulness of riches the deceitfulness of riches. This guy had a problem with his riches. Jesus said, lay it down. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Didn't say they can't. Said hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle then a rich man go to heaven. He warns about it. I would not want to live for riches, guys. God, if, if I ended up prospering in that kind of way, then God would give me the grace to do it. But God warns about it, and many people would struggle with it. You would struggle with great riches. Jesus warns about it right there. This guy had a problem with his great possessions. He did all the other things, but the possessions were the problem. The possessions were keeping him from God. He said, lay it down. And then Jesus explains how hard it is to get to heaven for a rich man. Didn't say it was impossible, but he says it's very hard. And that same message that Jesus is saying in Matthew is also said again in Mark chapter 10, verse 17 through 25. Same scripture, but I'm going to go to Matthew six. I'm going to go to I'm going to Matthew six, verse nineteen and twenty. See what Jesus says. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Lay up for your treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves do not break in through steal. For where your treasure is, there will also be your heart. Where are you storing up your treasures, guys? On earth? You seeking after riches? You seeking after wealth? You seeking after a false prosperity gospel? Or are we seeking after Jesus Christ? His beauty, His majesty. His glory, his character, his love, his heart. Worshiping him, following him, loving him, surrendering to him daily, depending upon him, trusting in him, spending time with him. It's all about him. It's all about the Son of God. It's all about Jesus Christ. He's awesome. I live for him. Hallelujah. He is my everything. I don't care about riches. I don't care about that false prosperity gospel. I love Jesus. I seek after his heart. I depend upon him. I live for him. I abide in him. I'm trusting in him daily. Not for what he could do for me. I just trust in him. All of him. He's awesome. Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. 
or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon. You cannot serve God in mammon, which is money. Luke 8.14 Luke 8.14 And that which fell among the thorns are they which men they have heard, which when they have heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Jesus is warning about riches again. In that which fell among thorns are they which when they heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. God warns, tells you about the seed falling on ground. These are the ones that it choked, it's choked up by the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life. There's no fruit there, guys. These people that are pimping, all these people that are sowing their money into their, they're sowing it to the devil, and the devil's making them rich. Not Jesus Christ. And they're only rich in finances. They are poor and pathetic and evil workers that need to repent. Their fruit is rotten fruit. What's their fruit? Pride. Arrogance. Filled with it. Just because they toss a few words God's ways, they're not talking about Jesus Christ. They can say it all day long. They know who they serve. You don't think you don't think the devil can give riches, guys? Let me sidetrack there for a minute, okay? Let me sidetrack here for a minute. Where does this health and wealth and false gospel come from? It comes from Satan. Where does the gospel of greed come from? It comes from Satan. Matthew chapter 4. Again, verse 8. Again, the devil taketh him, that's Jesus, taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, all these things will I give thee. All these things will I give thee, the devil says. How laughable is that? The created being is talking to the almighty God who created him. How prideful and wicked. But he has... Legal rights here on this earth until Jesus Christ comes back. And saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So the devil took God, Jesus, up on the highest of mountains, up into exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. He says, you can have it all. He already owned it all, devil. The devil can give you riches. The devil is the one giving these people jets and mansions and filling their bank accounts with millions. I think I heard, did he say he was a billionaire or one of them? Did Ken say he was a billionaire? I think he might have said he was a billionaire. Well, what profits a man, Kenneth, if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? See, these false prosperity uh, gospel ministers of Satan are exposed, guys. 
Now, God loves them and he's calling them to repentance. That's why he has men like me and other men and women out there exposing the unfruitful works of darkness, marking them to cause division among you, to turn from them so these people can repent. Repent. The devil can give you riches and finances, but he cannot give you life. Only Jesus Christ can give you life, eternal life. Only Jesus Christ can save you. Only Jesus Christ can wash you. Only Jesus Christ can deliver you from your sins, set you free from the penalty of sin, set you free from the power of sin. Only Jesus Christ can give you eternal life. You want the prosperity false gospel? You can go seek Satan. I, in this house, as for us, we will serve the Lord. And that is Jesus Christ, our God, our Savior, King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one that saved us and washed us and set us free, the one that imputed his righteousness onto us, the one who saved us by his grace through faith in him. The devil's up to the same tricks, guys, offering people wealth to sell their souls to him. The devil's the one that's behind the greedy, false, prosperity gospel. Do not be deceived. Luke 12, 15. Luke 12, 15. And he said unto them, Take heed. And beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Jesus warns here, take heed. Beware of covetousness. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 10. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 10. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. That is also vanity. Definition of prosperity, guys. Prosperity. A successful, flourishing, or thriving condition, especially in financial respects. Prosperity. What's prosperity about? A successful, flourishing, and thriving condition, especially in financial respects. What's prosperity? False gospel about. False promises on divine health and wealth. It's all about health and wealth. What's, what's the health and wealth? Especially in financial respects. Let me ask you a question, guys. If I met up with you guys once a week, and I met with you guys next week, and when I seen you, all I'm talking about is the Boston Celtics. The Boston Celtics. They're going to win it all this year. The Boston Celtics have the deepest team. The Boston Celtics have the best colors. Their jerseys are green and white. Oh, the Boston Celtics. They got the most championships. The Boston Celtics. Their franchise is the best. The Boston Celtics. And then the next week I meet up with you. Did you see Jalen Brown on the Boston Celtics? 
that dunk that he did, Jalen Brown is the best dunker in the world. And then the next week I met up with you. Did you see Kyrie Irving make that crossover and break that guy's ankles and then go to the hoop and make a layup? Did you see that he's got the best crossover in the world? And then the next week I make up with you. Did you, did you see Jason Tatum and that pullback silky jumper that he made a buzzer beater and won the game? Jason, Jason Tatum's the best power forward in the game right now. And the next week I seen, uh, I met up with you and I said, did you see Al Horford? Did you see Al Horford, that defense that he played? Al Horford's the best defender in the game right now. He's on the Celtics. And then the next week I meet up with you. Did you see that play that Brad Stevens called out of bounds to win the game? Man, that was smart. Brad Stevens is the best uh, basketball coach. And every single week, all I talk about is the Celtics. How good they are. Would you not come to the conclusion that, man, this kid really loves the Celtics? I think you would, guys. I think you'd say, man, all he talks about is the Celtics. I think you would figure it out that that person loves the Celtics. Well, guess what they do, guys? All they talk about is a false prosperity gospel. I think they love the prosperity gospel. What is prosperity? Especially in financial respects. Flourishing and thriving in conditions. So what do they love, guys? They love money. What is the love of money? The root of all evil. They twist it around. Money's not bad. Money's not bad. No, they love money. That's all they talk about is the false prosperity gospel. Come to the conclusion that, hey, that's all they talk about is a prosperity gospel. No, I, gospel, false gospel. I think that's what they love. Figure it out, guys. It's not too hard to figure out. Perfect analogy. If that's all they preach is a false prosperity gospel, they love prosperity. They love their private jets. They love their, their gold bathrooms. They love their mansions. They love their Bentleys. They love their bank accounts. They're millionaires. They love it. Acts chapter 20, verse 28 through 30. Acts chapter 20, verse 28 through 30. Take heed therefore unto yourselves. Take heed unto Therefore, unto yourselves, take heed to all the flock over the, over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, drawing away the disciples after them. Not after God. These guys are drawing them onto them. Not after God. They're not talking about repentance. They're not talking about holiness. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. They're not living, a, not talking about surrendering and, and living righteously. They're not talking about turning from your sin. They're not talking about laying down your life to Jesus Christ. They're not talking about living for him and not for riches or wealth or prosperity. They're focused on one thing. They're not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. As I read in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, John 3, 16 and 17, Romans 5, 8 through 10. They got one message, prosperity, false gospel. They're not teaching about sanctification, surrendering and living holy unto God. Worship in Him with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. They're not teaching you about suffering. 
all over the New Testament. Talks about suffering for Jesus Christ. Talks about persecution. All that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Verse 33 and 34. What's Paul say? This is Paul still talking. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. What's Paul say? I have coveted no man's silver or gold. Real mighty man of God. Real mighty man of God. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands, Paul says, these hands have ministered unto my necessities. He worked with his own hands. And to them that were with me. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 through 10. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. They don't talk about godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doubted about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men, of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw yourself. Run. Run. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. For they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. A few more scriptures and we're closing, guys. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you. Thank you for your word. Your word is true. Thank you for your grace to preach the truth. It's for your grace, God. It's your word, God. It's by your spirit, oh God. So thankful for you, Lord Jesus. So thankful for you, Holy Spirit of God. I can do nothing without you. And I'm so grateful, God, for you to save an old wretched man like me, for you to choose the foolishness of the world, the confound, the wise, God, the weak things of the world, of the mighty. Truly, we can do all things through Christ, guys. Truly, we can. What an honor it is to teach God's word, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's amazing. Amazing. I love all the even all these these people that are deceiving people. I have love for them. I pray people like Kenneth Copeland and Jesse Duplantis and Todd White and like Bill Johnson and all these people. All these people. God knows that I prayed for them. I despise these doctrines of demons. I despise the evil and the wickedness pouring through these men. I despise it. But God loves them and I love them and I hope that they find the goodness and kindness of God that leads to repentance. They receive God's mercy and grace and be set free from the devil. And they give their lives to Jesus Christ. We've all made mistakes. At some point, we've all went astray. God's mercy is new this morning. God's mercy is new today. And as long as we have breath in our lungs, guys, there's someone out there following this greedy false gospel. If there's someone out there preaching this greedy false gospel, you can repent. Please share this message with other people. 
This is a doctrine of demons, false prosperity gospel, sucking people's souls away. These people are leading, they're blind shepherds, leading the blind. Isaiah, the prophet, warned about them, guys, almost 2,700 years ago, somewhere around then. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 11. I'll go to verse 10. His watchmen are blind. They are ignorant. They are dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds. What are shepherds? Pastors. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his own gain. Guys, God knew this day was coming. These end times that we're in right now, these are the end times. Jesus Christ is coming back any moment. Hallelujah. Thank God. We got to tell people the truth. We got to warn people. We have to love people. We have to encourage people. If need be, we have to correct people. That is love, guys. Teaching the truth, the word of God. Don't be like a wave of the sea tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine by the cunning craftiness of men. Let me read that one more time. His watchmen are blind, they are ignorant, they all are dumb dogs, they cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs. They are greedy dogs, which can never get enough. They are shepherds or pastors. They are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his own gain. He's talking about the false pastors. Greedy dogs behind pulpits, only looking for their own gain. That's the Old Testament. Let's go to the New Testament. What's Apostle Peter say about this? Second Peter, chapter two, verse one through three. But there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you, and privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness, He's talking about the false teachers now. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now for a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not, guys. These people are making merchandise of you. They are coveting your money. They are stealing your money. They are stealing your lives away. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And following these people, guys, if there's anyone out there following these false preachers, preaching a different gospel, a false prosperity gospel, you need to repent and turn from your wicked ways. These people are, through covetousness, shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. They're pimping you. They're selling all their books, all their CDs, taking all of your, your money. You're sowing in to them. Seed time harvest, seed time harvest, blah, 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 blah. They're stealing your money. Two scriptures left. I'll take heed. Take heed to the word of God. For uh, Galatians chapter one, verse eight and nine. What's Paul saying? But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, that than that which we have preached unto you. We see what Paul preached about the gospel. First Corinthians 15, one, Romans five, eight through 10. We see in other parts, of, I told you about the gospel. Paul's right in here. 
But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed or condemned. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. He says it two times in a row, guys. Two times in a row he warns. And he also warns again in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. And it's no coincidence if you drop down 10 more verses, he's talking about the false teachers that transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. Now let this be a warning to you, to these people, whoever you are, whoever you may know, that are following these greedy dogs behind pulpits, that are sticking up for this false prosperity gospel. Let them know this scripture, guys. 2 John. Take heed right now, whoever's listening, to share this with other people. If they are following greedy dogs behind pulpits, if they are following false prosperity gospels, if they're receiving those lies, if they are sticking up for these men, they are sticking up for Satan, listen to this scripture and be very careful. Don't run from this scripture. 2 John, verse 10 and 11, if they're come any unto you and bring not this doctrine. Receive him not into your own house, neither bid him Godspeed. Don't encourage him to keep preaching like that. For he that abideth, for, for he that biddeth him Godspeed, meaning like they encourage him to keep preaching these false doctrines, to keep leading the people astray. For he that, that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. If you are sticking up for the false prosperity gospel, you are partaking in their, e in their evil deeds and you will be judged. Think about that scripture. If there's anyone that you know following these men, these false teachers, these wolves, these greedy dogs behind pulpits, following a false prosperity gospel, making all about health and wealth, how dare they? Jesus Christ ran into the temple and flipped the tables and scourged them out and said, you are making my father's house a den of thieves. That's about the only place in his ministry where he had a righteous anger came out like that. He ran in, flipped the tables, and scourged them out. And said, you're making my, my, my father's house is not uh, for a den of thieves. You're making it for a den of thieves. For... He that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. You are partaking in their evil deeds. If you were sticking up for a false prosperity gospel, if you were following greedy dogs, wolves, and sheep's clothing, you will have to stand before God. And it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. You are partaking in their evil deeds if you are following these people and following this false prosperity gospel. These people, these people are making this a mockery. They are trampling on the blood of Jesus Christ. They are making it all about prosperity, health, and wealth using covetous practices with feigned words making merchandise of you and some of the hardest people to talk to are these so called Christians that are in these buildings or to follow these people online or on TV you try to warn them to help them and they have nothing to say I've gotten into conversations with people I'm bringing the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Then they bring the word that has nothing to do with the word. They are taking some, it's like if I'm talking to you about something and I change the whole subject and bring a different scripture. That means nothing has nothing to do with what we were just talking about. 
I was trying to correct somebody. And they, they gave a scripture, uh, I think it was in Titus, about don't argue or have foolish disputes about gene, genealogies and about the law. I was correcting them about this, what I'm talking to you today. This has nothing to do about genealogies or about the law. This has everything to do about Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't even know what they're saying. They make no sense. One of them told me, because they were older than me, that I shouldn't be preaching. So then I gave her a scripture. <laughs> And showed who Timothy was. Timothy was a preacher in his 30s, it was said. Paul tells him, don't let anybody despise your youth. How ridiculous. So I'm 37 and you're 55. I can't, I can't correct you with God's word and encourage you in the truth. Come on. Taking scriptures out of context. Not making any sense. She had to run away from that too because I came with more scriptures. That's what they do. They run, they twist around stuff. They stick with their indoctrinations, indo indoctrinations of this false gospel. Well, this is a long message. I'm, uh, guys, I had to get this out. This is important. This is all about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the real gospel of Jesus Christ, not a false prosperity gospel of wolves in sheep's clothing. Love you guys. God bless you and uh, be encouraged. Stay in the word. Love you.